Hello everyone, I'm Jeremy, um, and this is my very first video doing a proof uh, as a screencast, so this should be really fun. Um, so what we're going to do in this video is we are going to uh, take this Bezier curve, uh, which I've shown is defined by the control points P0, P1, P2, P3, and we're going to split it into two smaller, uh, also cubic Bezier curves, uh, defined by P0, M0, Q0, B of 1 half, and b of 1 half q1 m2 p3. Um, so uh, really quickly I want to show how this decomposition works. Um, uh, so it's just making use of the of the property of Bezier curves that say at time t equals 1 half we're going to go halfway between the two Bezier curves of lower order. Uh, so that's what you see happening here. And I'm, not going, I'm not going to explain this diagram too much. Uh, I have a post uh, which this video is in the middle of that explains where this diagram comes from. So if you see this video and you haven't read the post, uh, look down in the in the links at the bottom. I'll put a link uh, to the post so you can read about it. Uh, great. So what we're going to do is uh, we're just going to see uh, really quickly. So let's write out uh, which control points we have. So we have uh, P0, P1, P2, and P3. Uh, and the idea is that if we take midpoints of each of those, we can get the M's. Uh, so I'm gonna write these in this little uh, di this diagram that's like a uh, sorry this I'll write these in this uh, little diagram that's like a pyramid. So uh, if we take the average of p0 and p1, uh, we get m0. Uh, so instead of m0, I'll just write p0 plus p1 over two. Uh, and this one we get p1 plus p2 over two. In this one, we get p2 plus p3 over 2. Uh, and if we continue to take averages of this sort of building up the pyramid going down, uh, we're going to get uh, a bunch of uh, more complicated expressions. That will be for the q's. Uh, so this q0 is going to be, so here I'm adding these two points together and then dividing by 2. So adding them together first gives me uh, p0 plus 2p1 plus p2 divided by 2, and then dividing by 2 again just adds an extra factor of 2 to the denominator, so I'm going to put that in the square right here. And doing the same for this side gives me p1 plus 2, p2 plus p3 over 2 squared. Uh, and now taking averages again, we'll see that uh, we get one copy of p2, one copy of p3, uh, three copies of uh, P1, so two from this side and two from this side, and three copies of P2, one from this side and, and two from this side. So uh, putting that all over the common denominator, we get P0 plus 3P1 plus 3P2 over 3 all over, whoa, that fraction bar is not in the right place, and neither was that one. There we go, all over uh, 2 cubed. And so the idea is that this, uh, really quickly, this first half of the curve, starting at P1 and going all the way up to B2, B of 1 half, uh, is going to be defined by the four control points on the left-hand side of this pyramid, so these four right here. Uh, and then uh, doing this in blue, going from B of 1 half down to P3, this is going to be defined by the Bezier curve starting at the top of the pyramid, or I guess at the bottom in this perspective, and going up to P3. So, uh, so let me just draw these points really quickly in red. So this one is going to be M0, this one is going to be Q0, and this is B of 1 half. And then in blue, we're starting from B of 1 half, and then we're going up to Q1, and then up to M2, and then up to P3. So uh, the idea is that this this sort of way of building up this pyramid is going to work for any Bezier curve, no matter how many control points there are. Uh, so if there were 10 control points up at the base of this pyramid, you would get this length of this red side would be 10, and the length of this blue side would be 10, and so you'd split your Bezier curve in the middle uh, into two uh, degree, or I guess degree 9 Bezier curves for the left-hand side and for the right-hand side. Um, and so the whole point of this video is to sort of give a formal proof that the left-hand side of the curve actually is uh, this black thing that it was the original curve here, and that the right-hand side is the original curve as well. Um, so it turns out that there's quite a lot of algebra. 
Uh, and this video is more to test out my stuff than to say anything particularly deep. Uh, so we'll just do the left half. So we'll define the, the, we'll write out exactly what the polynomial is for the Bezier curve with p0, m0, q0, and b of 1 half. And we'll write out uh, sort of a modification of b which gives only the first half of this curve. And we'll see that they're actually equal as polynomials. And so the curves have to be the same. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that right now. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm just going to move the screen a little bit. Uh, this tool is pretty awesome. So I'm just going to do this. Uh, and so uh, this curve, so I'll call this curve L of t. So this is for the left hand side of the curve. And this is going to be the curve defined by uh, the control points in red over here. So it's going to be uh, p0, p0 plus p1 over 2 p0 plus 2p1 plus p2 all over 2 and then p0 plus 3p1 plus 3 hold on plus 3p2 plus p3 uh, all over uh, 2 cubed right so there's a squared here Okay, so I wrote this in list form, but this is actually a polynomial, and we can write out what the polynomial is. Uh, so let me uh, go ahead and move the screen more so we can see everything. Uh, great, so, so this polynomial, uh, I'm going to sort of write out by definition what this means, and then I'm going to skip an intermediate step and write down what the resulting polynomial looks like at the end, because it's a lot of just sort of arithmetic, and I want to spare you guys from having to listen to me do arithmetic uh, in my head and probably mess up a few times. So. Uh, great, so L of t just by definition is going to be 1 minus t cubed p naught plus 3 1 minus t squared times t p naught, hold on let me draw that right, p naught plus p1 all over 2 plus uh, 3 times 1 minus t t squared here p naught plus 2p1 2 p1 plus p2 all over 4 uh, and then I'll write the last part down here so this is uh, t cubed times p naught plus 3 p1 plus 3 p2 plus p3 all over 8 okay so this is sort of a, a nasty expression but what we're going to do is we're going to group things by uh, the degree of t that shows up in the expression. So if we rewrite this, I'm just going to sort of skip some steps. If we look at the constant terms, you'll notice that the only constant term is this going to be this one here for the p naught. Um, so uh, actually, I mean, just expanding this really quick, this is going to look like one minus t plus t squared. So there's sorry threes in here plus minus three t plus three t squared uh, plus t cubed. Right. This is why I don't do all this in my head because I would forget threes everywhere. Uh, but the idea is that uh, this is the only place that a constant times a point is going to show up because here there's a t, here there's a t squared, here there's a t cubed. So this is sort of the reason that goes into it. Uh, but anyway, the constant part of this polynomial is just going to be p0. Uh, the linear part of this polynomial is going to just involve p0 and p1. So in these, so here there's all squared terms, here there's all cubed terms, so it's just going to be these two guys that contribute to the linear terms uh, and the coefficients are going to look like uh, minus 3 halves p0 plus 3 halves p1. Now the squared terms uh, is going to involve uh, by the same reasoning p0, p1, and p2 because there's t squared here. Uh, so the coefficients that end up being part of this are uh, 3 fourths p0, sorry, not plus, but minus uh, 3 halves p1, plus 3 fourths p2. And so this is uh, for the squared term and then for the cubed, uh, it's going to involve pieces from all four terms. Uh, so. Uh, let's just write it out. So it's going to be uh, minus 1 8 p naught plus 3 8 p1 minus 3 8 p2 plus 1 8 p3. 
So you might notice the one three three one pattern that shows up here. This is sort of hinting that we're doing it right. Um, so let me just move down here a little bit. And the idea is that if we write out uh, a suitable modification of the B polynomial, we'll actually get exactly this polynomial here. Uh, and so to figure out what we want to do, we want to take B, uh, and instead of just plugging in T, we want to plug in T over 2. So let's actually go back to this uh, diagram over here and see why that is. So in this diagram over here, so let's look at this curve. So if we want the first half of this curve, right, usually the variable is 0, uh, between 0 and 1, so t is going from 0 to 1, but we just want the first half of the curve, and we want to stop when t equals 1 half. So uh, what we can do to sort of fix this is we can just sort of divide through by 2. Uh, officially, we're called, uh, this is called reparameterizing the curve. So we're going to reparameterize this curve to be uh, half of its uh, original speed. Uh, so t over 2, as t goes from 0 to 1, t over 2 is going to go from 0 to 1 half. So this is why we're plugging in uh, t over 2 into our b formula over there. So let's go back over here uh, and actually write out what this polynomial is. And I'll leave the, the L of t polynomial up here so we can look at it for reference when we're trying to compare things. So b of t over 2, this one is a lot easier than l of t because we're just sort of uh, using the definition uh, of this with changing t to t over 2. So here we have 1 minus t over 2 cubed p0 plus 1 minus t over 2 squared times t over 2 p1 plus uh, 1 minus t over 2 t over 2 cubed, sorry, squared, p2, plus finally uh, t over 2 cubed, p3. Right. So all we got to do is expand these things. Uh, so I've already done that. It's not so bad. Uh, we're just so this first term is going to be exactly uh, 1 minus 3 halves t plus 3 fourths t squared minus one eighth t cubed p naught and just really quickly noticing up here the only constant part of p naught is this one and that's the same one that we get up here uh, the minus three halves is the linear part of p zero and that's exactly what we get up here the three fourths is the squared part that's exactly what we get up here and minus one eighth is exactly what we get here so this is we know it Rod you're on the right track so let's look at just the the p one terms uh, so this is going to be uh, 3t over 2 minus 3t squared over 2 plus 3t cubed over 8, p1. So again, up here in the p1 terms, we have 3 halves for the linear term, we have minus 3 halves for the squared term, and we have 3 eighths for the cube term. So this part of it is right. Uh, and then again for uh, right, so for p2 we have uh, this is just going to be three fourths t squared minus three t cubed over eight p2. And then again here we have three fourths. Here we have minus three over eight. So these coefficients are the same. And then finally for the p cubed term we have just t cubed over eight p3. Right. So p3 is just showing up in the t cubed term, and it's going to have this factor of 1 8. So these polynomials actually have term by term the exact same coefficients, and so they're equal as polynomials. Um, so uh, that's basically all that I wanted to show you was this little proof. Uh, and then the last thing is if I want you guys, if you want to try it, uh, the next step on your own, uh, you would define the right hand side of the graph. So you would say the right hand side in terms of t is this polynomial defined by, uh, so I won't write it down, but it's precisely these blue ones. So uh, there's b of 1 half is the first one, q1 is the second one, m2 is the third one, and p3 is the last one. So you'd write out the polynomial in all that. And then you have to figure out exactly uh, what to choose for your parameterization uh, for b. And it turns out, uh, I'll let you guys think about this uh, in more detail if it's confusing, but we would, instead of be replacing t with t over 2, we'd replace t with uh, t plus 1 over 2.
So here, as t goes from 0 to 1, t plus 1 over 2 goes from 1 half to 1. So we want to show uh, that these two polynomials are the same. Uh, so I'll leave that for you guys as an exercise. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, if there's any uh, sort of issues with the sound or with the quality of the videos, uh, this is really my first time uh, uploading a YouTube video, so I'm not really sure how everything works. Uh, if you've got any tips, uh, you can leave them down in the comments, or of course if you have questions on the math or if you noticed a mistake I made, you can leave it down in the comments uh, and I'll do my best to address it. So uh, thanks for reading my blog, thanks for watching my videos, uh, and I'll see you guys next time.